My name is Amelinda Bratsbartorsen and I am a worship drummer from Norway. I was born in 1979, I'm married and I currently live in a city called Bergen. I am a full-time worship drummer or a so-called musicianary, so I travel a lot in Norway and also internationally. I'm playing with many different bands and worship leaders. I also teach about worship in Bible schools and at conferences and I am also a drum instructor. God wants to call the past to account. Literally two weeks ago, on the National Day of Norway, May 17th, the Holy Spirit came strongly upon me while I was making breakfast. And he gave me this verse from Ecclesiastes 3.15. Whatever is, has already been, and what will be, has been before, and God will call the past to account. So history also seems to be important to God. But God is also the God of generations, and He is referred to as the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Maybe you've already observed that in many of the Psalms and prayers throughout Scripture, they praise God for what He has done in the past, and they tell their own people's stories back to God. I believe that God is a generational God and that He cares about the past and the present time and that it is all connected. The history of your nation is important. The Ministry of Reconciliation seems to be connected to the prophetic. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17-18 we read, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. One thing we do is to reconcile and redeem our forefathers' sins in the past by asking forgiveness on their behalf. This is a biblical principle and we see many times throughout scripture that the Israelites asked God for forgiveness on behalf of their ancestors and atoned for their sins. In Norway and the Nordic countries we have a Viking heritage. It's likely that you have heard of those Norsemen, the Vikings that raided and plundered their way through Europe from around 793 until the year 1000. They especially targeted the monasteries in the Celtic nations partly due to their wealth, but historians also suggest that the Vikings hated Christianity and wanted to destroy it. It's a horrific heritage and something we want to repent of. And lately many people have prophesied of, over our Nordic nations that we will yet again go out as Vikings, uh, but in the opposite spirit, taking the territory back from the enemy by blessing the nations we once plundered, and now we will preach the gospel. This is all about displacement and tearing down strongholds. Stronghold is defined as number one, a place that has been fortified so as to protect against attack. Number two, a place where a particular cause or belief is strongly defended or upheld. Paul refers to spiritual strongholds in 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5. And this passage shows us that spiritual strongholds are arguments, lofty opinions or thoughts that are raised against the knowledge of God or are held in esteem over Him. A demonic stronghold can be present in people's lives, in their mindset and habitual sin, or as uh, cultural expressions in specifically geographic places like cities or nations. A stronghold is created where uh, certain sins or mindsets are being repeated, allowing principalities to gain power over that territory. Strongholds are created because humans allow them to. By our sins, iniquities and mindsets we create them and we uphold them. As an example, when we allow abortion, prostitution or laws that go directly against the will of God to be implemented, we give Satan legal ground to control certain areas in our society. We see this all throughout scripture. When Israel followed God's ways, God blessed them and the land and people prospered. When they started to worship other gods, they became more and more morally corrupted 
and their entire society changed. The power of the Word of God. 2 Corinthians 10, 4-5 says, The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We take, every, uh, take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. This is the way we resist the devil. We speak out God's truth to defeat the lies he tries to make us believe or the sins he tries to make us commit. How? By proclaiming God's truth written in scripture spoken by him. This is our weapon that has divine power to demolish strongholds. Prophetic worship is necessary for overcoming demonic powers. We have to ask God for revelation so we can align ourselves with heaven and proclaim the will of God. We can destroy the devil's plan by singing and playing out what God says and his truth. The reason the sun appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And so are we, by aligning ourselves with the Lord's will. I was in the house with a lot of spiritual activity going on. I was reading from the scripture stating the authority of Jesus in Philippians 2, how his name is about every other name and every knee must bow to him. Whilst I was speaking out God's truth and praising the name of Jesus, the atmosphere completely shifted. All that was needed was to proclaim the word of God out loud and praise the name of Jesus. The Word of God is our most powerful weapon. It's the truth. The Word of God is called a double-edged sword and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the Word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. It is important that we observe that when Jesus was tempted by the devil in the desert, he respond, uh, responded all three times by quoting scripture. And we must do the same. 1 Peter 5, 8-9 urges us to resist the devil standing firm in faith and the word of God spilled faith in us. Many are trying to make the word of God fit into their lives instead of submitting to the word of the one true living God and adjusting their life after his word. If we do that, we lose the most powerful weapon in the heavens and on the earth. And we let the de uh, devil gain legal ground to influence our thoughts. We are able to break agreements of the natural and spiritual all because our new creation in Christ. And then we need to understand uh, our position in heaven. You are a child of God, given son and daughtership through Jesus Christ and the redemption in his blood. According to Ephesians 2.6, we are seated in the heavenly realms in Christ. From this position in Christ and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. The password to enter his courts is thanksgiving and praise. So uh, I'm a part of a group of worshippers that frequently have worship out in the streets and sometimes on mountaintops and high places. Our calling is uh, to worship outside, in dark places, to do just this, lift up the name of Jesus so that he can displace the power of darkness, tear down strongholds and destroy the devil's plans in that area. So we go on undercover prayer and worship trips and uh, when we step into an atmosphere that is filled with the plans of the enemy, we can discern those plans and destroy them in the spirit. We always speak out the solution. We are not focusing on the problem, whatever that might be. If the atmosphere is heavy, we are thanking God for his presence, peace, joy and freedom. We bless and we do not speak against people or places. We ask God to show us what's on his heart and what he wants us to do. Then we align ourselves with uh, what he's telling us, speaking out what he wants to happen. On earth, in that nation, in that room, uh, in the people's hearts, etc. We are prophesying with words, singing out verses from scripture and proclaiming God's truths about who he is. Remember that you can release this through your instrument and the drums as well. Even though you don't use words, you have to be intentional with your thoughts, playing out and releasing, for instance, joy, peace, love, freedom, uh, and army marching or other things into the atmosphere through your playing, as we previously talked about in this course. Mm -hmm. 
During this course, I will be talking a bit more about history, opening up ancient gates and digging up the old wells. Because this is a course about prophetic worship, I will dive deeper into the sounds of old and new as well. So what does it mean to dig up the old wells? And what do these old wells sound like? Digging up old wells and specifically rebuilding walls is a common theme throughout the Old Testament. And sometimes these verses have double meanings to them as well. And in Genesis 26, 18 we read, Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died and he gave them the same names his father had given them. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. And Isaiah 58, 12, your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up age-old fountains. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. It is not only about rebuilding the actual physical walls, but it's also about rebuilding the spiritual walls and reclaiming the spiritual heritage. In 2018, there was a big gathering in the city of Bergen in Norway at the site where the kings and queens were crowned in the medieval ages. And it's a historical and symbolic site and the event was called Crown Him. The intent behind this event was to gather Christians from all over the city and the surrounding areas from all denominations and the different generations to proclaim that Jesus is the king over the city and the nation of Norway as well. And during the months we were preparing for this event, Words about digging up old wells came from everywhere. At first, I didn't know what this meant, but as we were preparing in prayer for the worship, I felt that the Lord reminded me mostly of old hymns. I asked the Lord, uh, why do I constantly think about old hymns when I ask for the set list? I felt the Lord say, I want you to dig up the ancient wells of the past. This was confirmed by so many others, and I slowly started to connect the dots. These hymns had been sung in the old churches of Bergen, also the ones that no longer exist. And they've been around for generations. To sing those hymns and connect with the revivals in the past is to dig up the ancient wells. So our worship set ended up consisting of mostly old hymns, many of them about crowning Jesus as King. This was actually very appropriate for that place and location. We released the sound of old combined with modern instruments and new rhythms and everyone who was present could re relate to those hymns, regardless of their age. During the first COVID-19 lockdown in Norway, I felt that the Lord highlighted a book about the history of the church in Bergen, the city where I live. A sudden urge to read church history and get to know the ancient history of Bergen and Norway came over me. Many things have happened throughout history, and although there are many Christians in Bergen compared to other cities, we desperately need more Holy Spirit fire in our churches. And that's when I felt that God gave me a revelation about doing worship outside the old churches in the city, saying that we need to dig up the old wells from the past to reignite the fire. As far as I understand it, the scriptures about digging up old wells, rebuilding wells, and also that which we have mentioned about God calling the past to account, are all backing this up. It is always very important to test all prophetic words and revelation uh, they, have, they have to be according to the scriptures. And the last thing I will mention in regard to the ancient wells is a story from when my worship band connected, went to Northern Ireland to Bangor, the Valley of the Angels. In the 700s, the Vikings raided the monastery and killed most of the monks. The continual worship that went on day and night in this place was silenced. And we wanted to go to this place to repent for what, what our forefathers had done. And we went to the old remaining wall, listening for what sound to release. And we all started to sing monotone, ancient sounding notes, realizing that it sounded just like Gregorian song, which was what they were singing back then. So an old song was released, and when we listened for that sound, for what, what sound to release, this is what we heard. In Revelation 8, verses 4 and 5, we read about the bowls of incense filled with the prayers of the saints. This suggests that when we pray, we are filling up the prayer bowls in heaven. It is interesting to think about how the prayers uttered in this church throughout the years are stored in heaven, still having impact. My point is that our prayers and prophetic declarations that we sing or play out during worship have an impact here and now, yes, but also through time. 
when our prayers are mixed with the prayers of our ancestors in those bowls. I believe that we dig up old wells, we rebuild ancient ruins and we are opening up the old gates of heaven. The prayers that have been spoken out here, how have they impacted this area and the people here? How are they impacting this area and the people here today? I wonder which songs and hymns have been sung in this place. I wonder who preached the gospel, what they were preaching and how they worshipped. Did they experience an uh, outpouring of the Holy Spirit? It is such an encouraging and exciting thought. We don't understand this fully and we don't always see or feel the results of our prayers or prophetic declarations. But based on these scriptures and all the other scriptures that we have studied in this course, we know that our prayers are important and that in the spiritual realm, God is enthroned on our worship. He's punishing evil, issuing heavenly decrees, and interacting with our worship. I believe that in worship sometimes we need to do prophetic acts to cancel things in the spiritual realm and tear down strongholds as well. Sometimes it is about redeeming history and places. Sometimes it is about bringing forth something new and sometimes it is about changing the atmosphere. Through this course, God has taken me on a prophetic journey that has shown me that the prophetic is not only about the future, but it is connected to the past. And from the past, we can call forth and align ourselves with the blessings that have been stored and spoken out as prayers and declarations. But we can also break strongholds created by our ancestor sins and actions break curses and redeem and reconcile so healing can happen and new things can come to pass. So the awesome thing is that you and I, we get to be a part of what God is doing by aligning our worship prayers and our lives with what heaven declares. Skal det spire frem, merke dere det?